Welcome to Weather School for Kids. I'm meteorologist Lisa Spencer. Have you ever heard your grandmother or your mother, a sister or a friend say, I'm having a bad hair day? Well, maybe you've even said it yourself. I certainly have. Well, what causes that? Well, a lot of times it is the weather that causes that. Certainly wind can cause a bad hair day. Check out this guy. But also humidity can cause a bad hair day. Makes your hair kind of frizzy, right? Or if you've got really long hair, it makes your hair just go limp. Well, let's talk about humidity. Humidity is moisture that is in the air. Now, if you remember back to when we did the water cycle, take a look, it's all a circle. So we've got evaporation, the air cools, condenses, condensation, and then precipitation collection back to evaporation. So where's the water vapor in all this? Well, that happens with evaporation. Evaporation changes a liquid into a gas or vapor. So what is humidity? Well, humidity is water vapor. It's how much water vapor is in the air. The way we measure that is with this weather instrument, H-Y-G-R-O-M, E-T-E-R. And if you'll notice, many of our weather instruments have meter on the end of them, like a thermometer. This is a hygrometer that measures the humidity that is in the air. So let's make a hygrometer today. Take a look at the one that I made just a little while ago. Here are the supplies you'll need. Two push pins, a cardboard craft stick, an index card, a paper tube like a toilet paper roll, a hair dryer, a shower or sink, tape, most all of those we have at home. I'd love for you to have a horse hair. It really works the best, but since most of us don't have a horse, you'll have to use a human hair. Now, if you don't have a human hair long enough that you can use, you'll have to maybe ask a brother or a sister or a parent, but ask first, okay? or you could get a hair out of a hairbrush. But the key here is it needs to be six inches long. So get something that you can measure with just to make sure it's long enough for your weather instrument. Since it's really hard to see though, today for our example, instead of using the real hair like I used on my model, I am gonna use a piece of thread so you can see it just a little bit easier. It works the same because what we're going to do is we're gonna first start with our cardboard craft stick. Now, since I don't have another one like the really nice one that I have here, and you may not either, you can make yourself one. All you need is maybe a cereal box or something similar where it's a little bit thicker piece of paper. This needs to be about four inches long and it will have two holes in it. So you might wanna get a parent to help you punch holes in either end of the craft stick. So the first thing you're going to do is put your hair, and I'm just gonna use the thread, remember, right through your craft stick, and then you'll want to tape off the first end. So I'm gonna put a piece of tape right there. Next thing we're going to do, we've got to attach this to our paper tube. So I'll take a push pin, put it right in here, and you can see about how far it is there from the end, around a half inch or so. Next step is I'm going to take our index card and I'm gonna line it up at the bottom and I'm gonna put that right through there. Next, I'll put our other push pin right there. So you can see they're in a line and about the same amount from the end. Then we'll take our hair and I'm going to stretch it up here to our top pin. And then once again, I'm going to thread this through the hole. Just a second. So now I have my hair through the second hole and if it slips off the top, it's okay. Just put that back on because you haven't taped it off yet. But once you do get it through, you'll want to line it up. See how it's straight across? So it's perpendicular is what we call that. So I'm gonna put my second piece of tape right here. 
to hold my hair in. And you can cut off the excess too. You don't need that. You're almost done. So now you'll want to take a marker and make a baseline. So make a little mark where your craft stick is located. Now you are ready to try out your weather instrument. This is what it should look like. Here's your paper tube, the two push pins, our craft stick, which is our arm. So our hair extends from here, loops around the push pin, and is tied off on this part of the arm. And the index card in the back, that's for you to make your notes of your baseline and how your meter moves up and also down. Let's put it to good use. Get your parents' permission. Take your hygrometer into the bathroom. Turn on the sink or the shower. Hot water really works nicely. Close the door. Check it in two minutes. And then make a new mark on your card of where your hair is either shorter or it's longer. And then check it again in 10 minutes. After you're done with that and see if it was how humid it was in the bathroom, then you want to dry out your hair. So you can turn on the blow dryer. No need to use the heat setting, but see how it changes. Well, you hear us talk about humidity on TV. We talk about relative humidity, and that's how much moisture that the air can hold at a certain temperature. So if we say it's 5% humidity, it's a really dry day. If it's 95% humidity, I hope I never say that, it's a really hot and humid day. And when the humidity, the relative humidity, is at 100%, it rains outside. Have you ever heard the expression, it's not the heat, it's the humidity? We say that a lot here in the South. So what does that mean? Well, if it's hot outside and it's really dry, there's not a lot of humidity, it's not too terribly bad. But on some of those hot summer days, have you ever been out playing and you just felt so weak and so lethargic and the air just felt like you could move it out of your way? That's a humid day. Remember when I was saying earlier that sometimes you can't see water vapor, but you can certainly feel it in the air? That's what it's like when it's not the heat, it's the humidity. Let me show you why. What do we do during the heat? Our body sweats, right? That's our body's natural air conditioning system. So that's just like little droplets of water forming on your skin. That's the sweat. Well, when our air conditioning system is working right, that water evaporates off the skin and it gives you a cooling sensation. That's why it always feels great when we get under a fan whenever we're really hot and sticky. But when it's humid outside, this water on our skin cannot evaporate into the air because already the air is so very full. So it is like putting a pantyhose or for you dancer types, putting your tights on with your skin wet. And that feels really, really gross. So that is why we say it's not the heat, it's the humidity. Well, I hope you have learned a little bit about humidity today and how to make a hygrometer. I would love to see a picture of the one that you made, or you can send me a picture of just a bad hair day, and I'll show those during the weather on News 4. You can send that to lspencer at wsmv.com. If you have any questions about humidity or about how to make your weather instrument, or maybe that one just didn't work for you, I've got some other instructions on how to make a little bit different hygrometer, and maybe that will work better with the things that you have at home. All you have to do is email me at lspencer at wsmv.com, and I'll send you those instructions as well. You can see all of my weather schools right here on my YouTube page, Lisa Spencer's channel. Check it out. You can learn more things about the weather and a few other science-related topics. Thank you for joining me for Weather School for Kids.